So, welcome back. We have been looking at taxonomies and one of the things we saw in taxonomies was this process of inheritance. And when we were looking at inheritance, we also saw that one could do some kind of default inferences in the sense that a high level concept would give you a default property or an inference, but you could override it with a inference which came from a node which was lower in the taxonomy. Now, we want to take a look at default reasoning from the perspective of logic and see how we can make inferences in a world where which is full of uncertainties essentially. It is very rarely that you can make inferences which are deductive in nature essentially. Very often you are faced with some degree of uncertainty and logic is not quite suited to happening to handling uncertainty and inconsistencies. So, we will see how we can extend logical reasoning to do what we call as default reasoning. So, this is a older slide we had said that if you are using the implication statement that for all x p x implies q x, for, for all x bird x implies flies x and then you get an instance of a bird for example, Peppy who could be a penguin who does not fly. So, the moment you add that to your knowledge base that there is a bird which does not fly, it makes a knowledge base inconsistent and we have observed earlier that we do not like our knowledge bases to be inconsistent because from inconsistency you can derive anything that you want whereas, our, we would like our knowledge bases to be meaningful. So, we had said that we will look at how to incorporate this kind of reasoning later in the course. So, this is what we are doing now. So, the problem is with the universal quantifier. If you express your world knowledge in terms of universal quantifiers, then the statement has to be true for every instance in the domain essentially. So, one facet of reasoning under uncertainty is known as default reasoning. This involves making inferences that are plausible or likely, but not entailed by the knowledge base. So, the need for default reasoning arises because of our desire to generalize connections between categories. So, our favorite example is going to be birds and flight. We would like to associate birds with flight, but as we saw, uh, if we say that all birds can fly, then the moment you get an exception, uh, your whole system crashes. So, we cannot work with universal statements like for all x bird x implies fly x. The moment we came up with an exception, for example, a bird called Peppy, uh, we could this thing and uh, our knowledge base become inconsistent. Or unsatisfiable. So, instead we would like to have a mechanism by which given a knowledge base, we can make the set of plausible inferences with the caveat that if more knowledge arrives or if the knowledge base grows, then some of those inference may not hold any longer. So, we should be prepared to do that. This implies that a set of inferences that we can make does not always grow monotonically with what we know and could in fact become smaller when we add more facts to the knowledge base. So, for example, we, we can say that Peppy is a bird and only later we can say that we might say that Peppy is a penguin. Then of course, we would have to withdraw the conclusion that uh, Peppy can fly. This form of reasoning is also called non-monotonic reasoning because the set of inferred sentences does not grow monotonically with the known facts with the set of known facts. So, we want to move beyond deductive inference essentially. Now, one thing that we would like is that our knowledge base is a collection of true sentences. We do not want a knowledge base to be inconsistent to start with. We have seen that we often tend to distinguish between facts and rules. Facts are basically propositions. They may be statements about individuals in the domain or even universal statements which are true. 
but they are generally they they often don't have logical symbols connecting them though they could still have so we could say that uh, peppy is a parrot or peppy is a penguin that's a fact and we have used the disjunction there the inferences are made using rules and rules are in first order logic at least universally quantified statements and we have seen that we can reduce first order logic into a logic which works only with the implication statement we had shown for example in frege's proportional calculus that the set of connectives of uh, negation and implication is a complete set and with using modus ponens we can build a complete logical system so we will focus on rules which are implications as we have been doing quite a bit so now to contrast general statements with universal statements Uni universal implications are not always the norm so sometimes they are but not always so consider the following that all men are mortal now that's true of course because it is said that the only certainties are death and taxes so everyone is destined to die we might say all roses are red but that's not a true statement because you can have uh, roses of other colors too white roses or pink roses or even black roses we can say that all trapeziums are quadrilaterals that's true but that's by definition because geometry is something which we have invented all parents are older than their children that's also true and that is true because of the way procreation happens you first have to be born and then you have a child later so obviously you will be older than your children so some things are universally true but if you say all birds fly and that's our favorite uh, example that is false because there are exceptions like uh, penguins and emus and ostriches all aquatic creatures are fish that's also false because we have whales which are not fish for example and snakes so if you were to express knowledge as universals then some of them would turn out to be false essentially nevertheless as we have said such associations are useful so we would still be like to be able to express them so we will express them as general relations and not universal relations so what we really mean is that in general for example birds fly essentially in general aquatic creatures are fish which may or may not be true because they allow us to make useful inferences what are the kind of inferences that we would like to make so these inferences are called default inferences so for example you might say x is a bird and we should be able to infer that x can fly or if we say x is a leaf we should be able to say x is green x did not go to college we might infer that x is not bright x is a professor we might infer that x has a phd degree now these are inferences which would normally be true though they may have exceptions such inferences though true in general may turn out to be false if one gets to know more about x essentially they are known as defeasible inferences in the sense that conclusions that can be defeated in the sense that made false so for example in the case of x you might come to know that x that we are talking about is an ostrich or if you are talking about leaves of a plant then it might turn out that you are talking about the indian pipe plant with whose leaves are white if you are talking about x not going to college then this x could be one of those people who started a software company and became one of the richest men in the world x is a professor but i had one of my favorite professors when i was a student was jr isaac very revered and respected uh, but he did not have a phd because at that time one could become faculty members without having phd's i think so such inferences are true in general way but may turn out to be false when you get to know more about x the question that we want to ask is how to make such inferences how to build a machinery that will make such inferences 
So, the general pattern of default inferences is as follows that if you know that x is a professor and there is no reason to believe that she does not have a PhD, then infer that she has a PhD. So, the important thing is that unless you know otherwise, then typically you would say if x is a professor, then x has a PhD essentially. We can also rephrase this as follows. You can say that if you know that x is a professor and you cannot show that she does not have a PhD, then infer that she has a PhD. So, this is going to be the general pattern of this thing that we would like to express uh, knowledge in the form of rules which allow you to make inferences, but also put in a uh, condition that unless this condition holds essentially. We will look at some approaches to formalize this and we will begin with the simplest of all such formalism which is closed world assumption. We will do that in the next session.